God says that homosexuality is an abomination to him. He says that if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. And he says that we need to be like a child. We need to humble ourselves before him. We need to give everything we have to God. Uh, we find an example where uh, the rich man says, what do I need to do to get into heaven? Jesus said, just give all your stuff to the poor. He turned around and walked away. He just couldn't do it. We, we, don't need to, we don't need to get so wrapped up in the material stuff of this world. We need to set our minds to things that are eternal. The Word of God, it's eternal. We need to, we need to grasp this book, this love story that God has given to us. We need to dwell on it. We need to just, just surrender to God's Word, to His will, and re uh, allow Him to reveal to us what He wants us to know. Uh, some people... They, they feel that uh, when they wake up in the morning, what they have to do is they say, okay, God, just open up the Bible for me today and reveal to me what it is that you want me to know. God can do that. I'm not saying. We need to have a set, uh, a set uh, scripture where we can go to for a week or a month. We need to have some kind of, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the proper word is. I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. But we need to focus on a specific passage to where God can use that through through that day, through that week, and through that month, and even even through that year, if God so desires. Um, for example, I've talked to Pastor Paul about this. Um, I've been convicted about this. I haven't necessarily had the most pray powerful prayer life, uh, and I'm sure that some of you can confess to that as well. Prayer is essential to developing a godly life. It is a it is a personal, we, we do not have a religion. We have a personal relationship with the living God, the one who died for our sins, the one who rose again. And he desires to have that, that time of, of uh, communication with us. He doesn't want us to, you know, uh, a lot of times we think that prayer is, you know, given our request to God. Uh, no, that's not necessarily true to, but uh, he wants us to listen to what he has to say. Uh, God speaks just as well as we do. Uh, he hears better than we do. Uh, James says that we need to be uh, quick to listening, slow to anger, and slow to speaking. So I think we need to take that to heart when we pray. But if we look in the Gospels, Jesus, he gave a prayer uh, for for us, for his uh, his brothers and sisters back then, and for us now, and if we if we just take that example and allow God to transform our prayer life from a five minute prayer life to, for instance, just an hour prayer life, imagine how much more uh, how much more God can reveal to us, how much more uh, closer we'll get to Christ if we allow Him to speak to us, if we allow ourselves to let Him speak to us. So, back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you first trust in the Lord, when you, when you realize that you're a sinner, when you know that you need a Savior, you know you need Christ Jesus, we are called to repent. Now, the word repent means to have a change of mind. So that means... Whatever sin we have in our life, we need to say, okay, that is not what God wants. That is not how we can honor God. So we change our mind from here to there. It's a 180 degree turn heading towards righteousness, towards God. And then it says, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Christians today ask, what is the, God's will for my life? I can't answer that for you. Uh, I can't answer what he necessarily has called you to do, I can answer that I know what he wants for all, us all in general. Uh, the first one is salvation. God desires that personal relationship with us. In John chapter 6 verse 40, it says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. The next one is we need to have an attitude of thanksgiving. 
We need to consistently be in prayer. We need to consistently give thanks to God, even in our hard times, and even when everything seems to be going right. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will, of, uh, will for you in Christ Jesus. When Jesus was breaking bread, what did he do? He gave thanks to God, uh, be, so the food would be blessed and the next one is uh, we need to trust God no matter what. Um, back mentioning the homosexuality thing, uh, when we were going through the process to get the Second Amendment uh, Act finalized and put into the Constitution, uh, I we we got hit pretty hard by the uh, uh, opposing side. I got called names on a daily basis. I got some pretty vulgar emails. But when, when, when we are tried by this world, 